Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. I'm Bob DeMarco, and coming up, a new one from Tops, a random knife giveaway, and my blade show acquisitions. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from Christian McBride, who said, Wow, great coverage of Blade Show, man. It's videos like this and a few others that really bring Blade Show to us at home who couldn't be there. And I thank you for that. You got some awesome stuff this year that custom Pinkerton was to die for. Meeting Lynn Thompson must have been a high point for sure, and indeed it was. Uh, I enjoyed the little interviews you did. Uh, they were fantastic. Definitely enjoyed the segment of The Knife Junkie, one of my favorites, I think. Keep up the great work. Well, Christian, thank you, sir, for putting wind in my sails. That was, uh, uh, it's always fun doing that one. Uh, I know it's a lot of work for Jim, uh, but that is always a fun episode because I get to uh, talk to a whole bunch of knife makers and just a whole bunch of people and uh, show, give my impressions of what my experience was. So I'm glad, uh, and, and in years before, before I ever went to Blade Show, uh, other video uh, makers were bringing that to me, uh, just like I'm bringing that to Christian. So thank you, that means a lot, sir. All right, uh, all that being said, I think it's time for a pocket check. Today I had in pocket the Night Horse by Asymmetrical, uh, a Beyond EDC brand. Uh, that that's their mid tier where they uh, dip into the titanium stores and the good steels, the S thirty five VNs, and then uh, they also have a lower rung and a higher rung. Uh, I got a chance to hang out with Dirk Pinkerton a bit this past weekend at Blade Show, which was really awesome. He's a great guy, uh, really good to spend time with uh but also man makes these incredible knives and uh so i've had this in my pocket the past few days this and the uh oddly priced other one the uh the g10 version which is so so inexpensive it's a crime that not every household has one uh at 30 bucks over at uh smoky mountain knife works definitely check that out but i just think it's beautiful i love the navaja and i love this modern take on it with that spanish clip and that dipping belly uh with the long acute point it this is just uh you know it's crying out for a for a street fight like i, I want to defend my honor every time i carry this uh beautiful thing uh so i had that in my front right pocket today and then uh as usual i was carrying a slip joint and uh, I've been on the kick. I've been on the most recent, uh, the most recent um, Jack Wolf knives kick. Uh, that being the uh, Feel Good Jack, a great, great knife. This has just kind of hits all the magic points. It's nice and slender and thin. It's based on a classic uh, pattern that I love, the Doctor's knife. And uh, I got that beautiful um, blue carbon fiber. <clears throat> But it's the Warncliffe blade or that uh, sheep's foot blade that is so impressive on this with the long, long tip. I positively love using this knife. Uh, it is just a wicked cutter. Very, very thin and slicey uh, on the edge. But that acute point is even more uh, acute than the Midnight Jack. Midnight Jack? Yes, the Midnight Jack. Uh, one that I really really love and for the blade uh so they're great companion pieces uh if you ask me man i, I have to say uh i uh had a chance to catch up with ben you, if you saw the the video that christian mcbride was just commenting on uh, you saw a quick interview with ben about the amazing uh bolster lock the the uh, gunslinger my god he he went from amazing like the like the best slip joints to just amazing, same level, amazing bolster lock front flipper. Um, amazing. I, I, I can't wait to show that thing off. It's so beautiful. But uh, in the meantime, you can watch that video uh, that just dropped on Sunday and you'll see him talking about it. But man, 
Ben Ben Belkin is even more impressive than I thought because he just entered a realm that he doesn't normally enter with pocket clips, etc., and locks and all of that. So hats off to you, sir. All right, next up uh, in my um, uh, waistband was the combatant by TKL Knives, the TKL Knives booth. I, I feel like I was just a flunky, like a, a, a groupie there. I kept kind of winding up there and hanging out. I think Tim is awesome and his wife is awesome. And then I met uh, his friend Imri, who he's uh, uh, doing the um, his latest uh, sapper model fixed blade with. A, uh, from the Israeli IDF. He was a very interesting character and fun uh, to hang out with. So I, I was just there all the time, and I was like, oh, man, I'm like a groupie. Uh, so I, I'd have to you know, go elsewhere and look at other cool knives. But uh, this is a great knife that I expected to carry that uh, front scout position, you know, just horizontal on the belt right up front. Um, but it ends up that when I received this, he also sent me the Night Stalker, and that is perfect. Rides perfectly on the belt like that, right up front, and doesn't print. You don't see it. It's like you forget it's even there. This one, to me, doesn't work as well th that way as it does appendix carry up front. So I just switched uh, discrete carry clips for this uh, deep, you know, uh, half inch or one inch uh, clip. So love this one, and it's, you know, you barely notice it. Um, sometimes like when I'm bending over to tie my shoe, I feel it and I'm just glad I'm not doing that all day long. Uh, okay. So that's the combatant. And then of course I had to have some emotional support in the way of fidget, uh, uh, energy expenditure. And so I carried this, I love this knife. This also, uh, touches me on the design aspect. I love that clip point blade with the jimping on it. It's really ideal for um, any sort of choked up uh, motion, not motion, but uh, use of that blade. For instance, you're cutting into a box, but you don't want to cut too deep. You can sort of grip that jimping with your uh, finger there and sort of gauge how deep you go into anything you're cutting, really. Uh, so I, I do like that jimping up front, not just because it looks cool. Uh, also great fuller. Um, and um, David Cam of Orion Knives, was doing the flipper um, button lock pretty much before everyone else, including we and Savivi, uh, with his um, uh, with his uh, what was the model? Uh, the Orion. Um, mm, 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 you're all yelling it at your screen, uh, and and it's escape Solaris. That's right, Solaris. Old man came through. Um, so yeah, he's been doing that for a long time and others have caught up. I, I like David Cam's work a lot. And this thing is beautiful, uh, as is the Solaris, because it's modular. You can swap out uh, different uh, pivot collars and different backspacers, uh, et cetera. I love it in this um, micarta. I believe it comes in a few other flavors, including carbon fiber. So that's what I had in my pocket today. I had the Night Horse by Asymmetrical. I had the um, uh, the Jack Wolf Knives Feel Good Jack, the Combatant by TKL Knives, and the Scorpio by Orion Knives. Tell me what you were carrying. Drop it down in the comment below. It's always interesting uh, to find out what you classy ladies and gentlemen uh, carry. Um, and uh, sometimes it gives me inspiration. Um, speaking of inspiration, a uh, couple weeks back, I promised this, forgetting that Blade Show was going to be the next week. I said, random knife giveaway next week. Well, sorry, that was Blade Show. I was gone, and uh, I just wasn't thinking ahead. And if you ask my wife, that might be something that happens um, more often than not. So here we have the Miguron Acri. Uh, this is a gift to the channel by Dave, this old sword blade reviews. A classy gentleman uh, given us a classy knife to give away. Look at this beautiful. Uh, it's, to me, it's a tactical gentleman's knife. It's got a nice... Uh, reach that's uh, about a 3.6, 3.75 inch blade of their proprietary steel called, stand by, DC-53 with a nice coating on it, nice crowned spine with a swedge, sort of a subtle swedge, and a very sharp knife, I will admit, I've uh, tested this out on paper before. Uh, make sure that you're going to get a good knife, of course. Uh, molded, or I mean, um, sculpted titanium clip, and 
the only knife I've ever seen gold accents on where I, I don't think it looks gauche or cheesy. And uh, the action is amazing. Uh, my left hand, maybe not so much uh, with a front flipper. So, yep, make your own accurate tomorrow night on Thursday Night Knives. Do tune in. Uh, and all you got to do is, like, leave a comment and you'll be put into a random generator. And boom, uh, you very well may win that knife all right still to come we're gonna do some l knife life news and find out uh, what's been cracking what's been coming out of blade show and then we'll get to the state of the collection um, if you're interested in helping support the show you can do so by going to patreon uh, and checking out the different tiers of support and the kind of stuff you get uh, in return uh, you can do that by going to the knife junkie.com slash patreon or scanning the qr code code uh on your screen such a reject again that's the knife junkie.com slash patreon if you're a knife junkie you're always in the market for a new knife and we've got you covered for the latest weekly knife deals be sure to visit the knife junkie.com slash knives through our special affiliate relationships we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives help support the show and save money on a new knife Shop at the knifejunkie.com slash knives. That's the knifejunkie.com slash knives. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Okay, so Blade Show, as you know, is the place where many new knives are debuted. Fox Knives always has cool, uh, cool offerings, if you ask me. Uh, but this year they had... Three real standouts, and uh, Ben Schwartz over at uh, Knife News highlighted them here, and I'm glad he did. First, uh, check this out. Uh, Les George, anything he does in my eyes is beautiful. Uh, so his is the Anzu, a sort of robust magna cut steel blade. Uh, as you can see there, it's got a, a bit of the, uh, the Les George look, as does the handle. This is sort of like an amalgamation of his styles, which is uh, great to see because I think everything he does is is pretty awesome, especially his daggers. So I'm excited to see this, and it's got the Versa lock. That's their that's their bar lock. Uh, so uh, that should be cool to see, uh, ambidextrous and all that. Uh, next down, this is the one to me that is the most exciting and beautiful, and it's the Goody von Poppel design. Um, uh, and it's the Eastwood. They had a folding version that they did not have at the show and that I've seen elusively here and there. I think uh, Therapeutic Edge had one and really got me excited for this beautiful design. I mean, look at that. And Goody Von Poppel, I think his stuff is awesome. And if you don't know who he is, look him up on Instagram and prepare to drool. Uh, stuff is awesome. But they made a fixed blade version. Here it is. Uh, I love the look of that. A beautiful swedged clip point with a continuous belly and a finger choil. Um, and then that horse hoof handle uh, is just awesome. You can choke kind of like choke back on it, if you will, and uh, do some swinging, uh, do some chopping with it. Light, obviously very light duty chopping, but otherwise in your grip, it is in there firmly and to me of course i i approve of its tactical app applicability uh but just a beautiful knife from someone who i think uh, designs really nice stuff uh he designed the lion steel uh, gitano folding um slip joint navaja if you're familiar with that knife and next up they have the metamorphosis which is pretty cool this metamorphosis you can uh, swap the the blades. Uh, this is designed by Dennis Simonuti, and I did not. I, I actually, I'm I'm not lying, but I'm just remembering now. Actually, seeing someone asking if the rest of it was here or something like that, and I didn't know what he was talking about. But now I read this. Uh, but yeah, it it is uh, the sort of thing you can customize uh, with the different style blades, and it uses that radius lock uh, that that uh, debuted last year at Blade Show and won all sorts of awards. Now, one thing I have to say about the awards, and, and I am not trying to cast aspersions anywhere, but um, I, I have noticed that oftentimes um, there seem to be legacy awards. Like, so, well, I, I guess the same companies continue to be awesome. You know, the same companies continue to be awesome, but 
um, you know, you always you always have to wonder what the criteria are for uh, for wins and such. So uh, in this case, um, uh, that Rotoblock one last year, uh, but that Metamorphosis looks like a pretty cool one, and all three of those blade shapes look pretty useful and quite nice. All right, next up, Andrew Demko had the uh, Megalolock. Megalolock, I think is what it is. Uh, it, to me, it reminds me of Megalodon, you know, Megalodon lock, the shark lock. This is the Megalodon lock because it's on this gigunda, this humongous folder. Look at this thing. Uh, at five and a half inch blade, uh, kind of like his offerings through cold steel. Uh, this is like a big luxury sort of custom cold steel. Uh, with with that lock, I mean that lock doesn't appear on any cold steels, but you you catch my drift. Uh, this thing uh, is a full custom uh, hollow ground spear point. It actually looks like a shark uh, when you when you look at it next to its its stable mates, other knives in the in the same shark lock uh, lineup. It is definitely the great white over there on the left hand. Even the even the tail end of that. Uh, which is no doubt, uh, that pommel is no doubt very useful uh, to keep that big knife, big and no doubt heavy knife in your hand with that upward flange and the downward. Uh, it does evoke a marine type tail and and the shape of that blade, of course, looks like, whole thing looks like a great white shark. Um, but, uh, what, what, you know, uh, if you want it, you're going to shell out major and you're going to wait and you probably won't get one at all because <laughs> I don't know how many of those they can they can make. Uh, but who knows? Look at it uh, with that full lineup. Very cool knife. Uh, I did not see it, unfortunately. Um, but there you have it. Uh, you can go get your own. Just save your shekels. All right, Spiderco at Blade Show, they had some really cool knives. I went around, uh, my favorite part of their um, of their display were the prototypes that are coming up. There are some incredible prototypes in that cabinet. Um, oh, beautiful. Um, so I'm very excited to, to see what's going to be coming uh, in the future from them. And and uh, it, you don't hear me talk about Spiderco like that. I mean, I have massive respect for them, but you don't hear me ooing and eyeing over there a beautiful stuff that much. Uh, but what they had in the counter looked very, very exciting. But what did come out uh, this time, um, look at the little Yo Jimbo. It's so cute up there. Uh, that's the the mini Jimbo uh, up top. But first, let's talk about the Native Chief Lightweight in their proprietary Spy 27. Uh, so now all the lightweights that have the Spy 27 have that dark blue. I think uh, that might be... Um, taking over for the old, um, what was the old one in the blue? Oh, oh, uh, um, <clears throat> some, oh, oh, B, uh, <laughs> damn, I can't remember the name of that steel. Uh, uh, you can, you can tap it in there down below. Oh, CTS BD1. I could just look down here right where it, it says that. But anyway, it's replacing that. It's got that dark blue, uh, light, uh, handle material and i love the native chief i love the length and the shape of that blade it is absolutely gorgeous uh we'll go down to the micro jimbo something that um something that michael janich mentioned on this show quite a while ago when it was in development uh you know these the, these things don't happen overnight sometimes it takes a few years to bring something to to market i i kind of love it it's not nearly as charming or beautiful as either the yo jimbo 2 or the yo jumbo um come on give me a, a few more curves on the blade just on the top like it it needs a more swooping sort of thumb ramp thing but who knows with the ergonomics it probably doesn't mike janich knows just exactly what he's doing uh, when it comes to knife design especially this type of knife design so uh can't wait to get this yes i have to have one so that i have the full lineup and uh, below that, yeah, Leaf Jumper K390, interesting. The one below that is very interesting to me. M4 Tenacious, Tenacious, which has always uh, been a budget heavy hitter, and then uh, and then they gave it S35EN, and that became not so budget. And now they're putting M4, a a luxury steel known for its high edge retention, um, extremely high edge retention. Uh, so this is now a luxury knife. This is a luxury Tenacious, which I think is pretty cool. 
Uh, it's a beautiful design. It works great. I mean, and then if you like to fidget with your knives, it is an excellent one. And then we go down uh, below that, the subvert sprint down there, uh, a uh, Nadi Amor. Uh, he is of um, Black Black Snow Customs. Uh, beautiful thing uh, that that knife. Uh, though, if I were to get one, I would just I would just go all out and spend the you know the, the several thousand to get the real thing. So, uh, oh, that's down below. Let's see. Yeah, this one right here. Yep, pretty pretty nice. Anyway, those are some of the things coming from Spider Co. Very excited, but I didn't get my military too. Uh, uh, they were, they were there. I could have gotten one at, at blade show, but I already paid my $5 down payment to blade HQ. Uh, so some, someday, someday they'll have it. I don't know. Blade HQ. They're awesome, but sometimes they're, they take a long time. I, I know it's not them. All right, but I'll blame them. All right. Next up, uh, third Spartan Harzi collaboration is unreal. It is Really, really beautiful. Let's take a look at it. Uh, this is a Harzi, Bill Harzi Jr. designed kukri. Look at that. Uh, it, yes, it's a kukri, but it's also more of a, I don't know. It is a kukri, but it's not so extreme a kukri. It is a nicely, uh, robustly recurved blade for incredible uh, chopping, hacking, slashing, um, pull cutting, and and all the rest of it. Uh, this is just a a wicked tool for um, all things, um, whether it be lit, um, uh, survival of all sorts, if you will. And this is another one of the 1095 Crovan uh, Spartan blades, uh, made in conjunction with um, uh, uh, just like they did the fighter. Uh, basically. And so a Taiwanese made knife and in reach, within reach to the common man. Uh, so I will soon be uh, getting this. Uh, this is the one. Uh, I, I did check out the fighter at Blade Show and I really like it. I wish the blade were a little longer, I must say, on the Spartan Harzi fighter. Uh, but it is a beautiful knife with a beautiful clip point blade and that awesome handle uh, that uh, has appeared throughout uh, Bill Harzi's uh, full tang designs for quite some time uh, uh, in one sort of iteration or another. And it's always a really nice looking. So I'm very excited for that. All right. Uh, lastly, I just want to mention uh, Knife Rights has uh, opened their ultimate steel spectacular uh, called Knives, Guns and More. And it is uh, or those are the things you can win. Um, and uh Remember, uh, this is how it works. Uh, while, it, while it lasts, every donation gets a, a donation knife. Like you see there, 100 bucks gets that SOG. And then already sold out are these um, at the 200 level are those Spider Co's. Uh, and uh, $400 level, you get that QSP. So on and on. Um, and depending on how much money you spend, uh, you get a number of entries into the the ultimate steel uh, main drawing where you get to choose a one of an amazing array of prizes i checked them out while i was at, at the at, at the blade show and they were all there and they are knives donated by custom knife makers by manufacturers like special versions by manufacturers uh, all sorts of like really good i don't know guns that well rifles that well but these incredible looking rifles with all sorts of crazy optics uh different like trips like safari trips hunting this and that just incredible prizes that you can win uh that people have donated to knife rights um you know so definitely go check that out it's a great way to become a member of knife rights it's the best time of the year to become a member of knife rights because you're uh your donation also also gets you a membership uh, and you have a chance to win all these great knives. So go check it out. Uh, Ultimate Steel, uh, spectacular at Knife Rights. All right, coming up on the Knife Junkie, we're going to take a look at uh, what is new in my collection, except uh, uh, with a little asterisk, and then Blade Show Acquisitions. 
The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Yes, let's. Okay, so I know you were all wondering uh, what I brought. Or you, you probably weren't wondering, but I, I just wanted to uh, uh, reiterate. I had the Kubi Flash. Uh, this is what I brought uh, just in case uh, I had to sacrifice one to the TSA. But now I'm starting to grow pretty fond of it two years in. And uh, two blade shows, I might retire this so that it doesn't get uh, nicked by the TSA. Also had the Nova one, but I have a couple of extras here, sort of unexpectedly. Uh, so the Nova one, I don't mean Nova ones, uh, but I do have to say the Nova one, uh, uh, the one of the ones of the production knives uh, was on the table at uh, Hogtooth Knives uh, at Blade Show and people loved it and were checking it out. And it was cool to see the production version. It is slightly different than mine, naturally, because we changed a couple of things from the prototype, and it is awesome. And he got so many people asking to buy that knife. So uh, we might figure out a way in the future to make something similar, but less exclusive or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But uh, I was very proud of that and happy and excited. But proud go pride goeth before the fall. So I I had to I had to just remember these. We have to get these done and in the hands of. Uh, people first, but that's not my hands. That's Matt's hands. Uh, very capable. Oh God. The knives he brought were incredible. Uh, it takes a lot not to spend money uh, on that stuff. Okay. So, uh, oh, next up, um, I, I did have my Victorinox, uh, but I cannot find it now. And I also brought the Nightcore P20iX uh, and uh, planned to carry it because I was walking to and from the hotel one mile um, you know, sometimes at night and then, uh, forgot this is so boneheaded. Uh, I packed it in my dob kit on a little, in a little side pocket. And then later when I was looking for it, I was like, Oh, where did I put it? You know, oh, I guess I must've forgotten it. And then I found it when I got home. Uh, so that was kind of a, a mama Luke move. Uh, but there it is. I brought it with me, I guess in case of extreme, you know, uh, I was tearing through all of my stuff. I would have found it. <laughs> uh, but when I thought I needed it, I didn't have it. So there you go. Prepare. Uh, but a couple of, uh, things on the way out. Uh, I, I saw this knife and I got it for my wife and, uh, sorry, Jim, I didn't tell you about this. So no lower third for this one. Uh, and I don't, I don't even remember the name of it. I just snagged it right before we started rolling. And it is a beautiful, cute little Senka. I mean, it's like, it's perfect for my wife who is petite, uh, but it's, you know, for her, it's kind of a, a long, thin, you know, uh, thruster, I guess. Uh, I guess you would call that, uh, you know, because it, it's because of the shape of it. It's pointy, pointier than some of the other stuff. Like she's got the uh, Elementum, which has a more bulbous uh, slicing blade. Um, she's got some other knives that are more like slicing blades. But this one is decidedly pointy. I th also think it's. It's very, I don't know, it's very attractive to my eye. And uh, the flipping action is awesome. And it also has a uh, very nice opening hole there. Uh, and we'll find out what it's called. And I'll make a little video on it. But it's pretty cool. Had to grab it from her. She she grabbed one of the knives that are that's coming up in the Blade Show acquisition. So I have to have a stand-in for it because... Uh, it's my Father's Day knife, and she insisted that I fork it over. Uh, but something else just came in the mail, and this is going to my good friend Jock across the shock. And it is the new Tops El Pionero, a collaboration with Ed Calderon. And so you see here on this uh, knife, you see his signature notch on the back of the pommel area of the blade. So that when you're using it in Pical style for defense and you uh, you want to index and know where your knife is, know where your edge is, you feel that notch, you know that the edge is in so that you're going to do maximum damage when you when you uh, go for those defensive 
arcing defensive thrusting stabs and such uh very nasty stuff uh you know that 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 style of fighting is intended for but it's also just a great looking utility knife and very easy to carry i've i've uh, put it in my waist I, I mean i haven't worn it all day carried it all day but it i can tell already uh, for me with the way i'm carrying it right now and with the way i used to carry it uh both in the waistband but now i appendix carry whereas i used to have it at three o'clock uh, it's still it's very comfortable in both uh, positions i find a rounded pommel very nice uh, so that it doesn't jab in too much to the ribs or anything like that uh, but this knife is great uh, i'm excited about this i'm gonna do a video on it and then send it over uh, jock's way but <clears throat> i might just end up getting one myself i'd love to put a little royalty money however little that probably is in the hands of uh, ed calderon and i always love supporting tops knives so why not right why not you tell me why not all right so we have gotten to the blade show acquisitions and this is, uh, i know that you saw them perhaps in the blade show show uh but not the optimal lighting and uh i could barely hold it and keep it in frame so here's a chance to show these things off uh in in a better light uh first is the pinkerton knives uh fire ant fixed blade triple edged warncliffe uh first of all you'll see that the i put a discrete carry clip on there and the screw hole configuration would only accommodate one screw so in order to both kind of keep this from turning too much and also keep it stationary under in the waistband and not moving around. I put this bit of bike tire or a bike inner tube over there and carried it today like that. That's the first time I've seen other people on Instagram do that. Uh, but it's the first time ever I've ever carried like that. And it was awesome. I must say uh, to have the, that, that bit of rubber under the clip, and also against the the in, inside of my my pants, you know that waistband there, it it just stopped all sort of rotation. And once you find a comfortable position for sitting and standing and doing everything you need to do, um, it stays where you want it. it. Stays and so it's great. So anyway, here's the knife. A great sheath from Dirk as always. But look at this. Uh, this is a well. You could call it a reverse Warren Cliff, but uh, I'm going to call it a or a reverse Tanto, but I'm going to call it a Warren Cliff. Uh, you know what? I'm going to call it a sheep's foot. Triple edged sheep's foot is what this is. It's in D2 steel, hand ground impeccably and perfectly uh, and beautifully by uh, Dirk. He's really awesome <laughs> at hand grinding. He's he's known amongst his peers as being uh, one of the best and. Uh, he's also great at designing folders uh, and other type uh, fixed blade knives for uh, the likes of Kaiser and Concept and Beyond EDC and um, Shielden now and uh, uh, others. He's a very prolific designer and also a, a wonderful maker. You've seen a couple of other his customs, but that triple edge, I could not walk away from that. Uh, there were, were many other temptations on that table, and I vacillated a little, but I kept saying, you know, triple-edged, baby. Triple-edged Warncliffe, or now I'm going to say sheep's foot. I think that's more accurate. Triple-edged sheep's foot, look at that thing. Or really, if I hold it like this, it's a triple-edged tanto, or tanto. Uh, but, but obviously, it's supposed to be held like this. Beautiful with the blue fat carbon, blue and black fat carbon, um, and the screws there very nice i'm going to put this back in its sheath carries really nicely uh that handle is great for coming up the the it's the perfect size all right next up uh, this is in a different form uh than it was in the last show which was just a couple of days ago uh this is from a company called fudo forge and i was just checking out their beautiful expensive kitchen knives i was not shopping for that but uh kind of struck up a brief conversation with them and and i asked for their cards and i noticed as i was reaching for their card um they had this array of these little scalpels and uh, they were 30 bucks so i had to get one um and i made a little drop in the pocket sheath with a little hook so you can extract it and 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 pull the sheath off 
uh, right as it comes out of your pocket. And then I also jute wrapped it here. So I see that nice jute wrap. And that's their logo upside down, I guess. It's, it's like that. Fudo Forge. But check out this sweet little scalpel blade. This thing is really awesome. Very useful. Uh, I haven't quite used it yet. I did open a package uh, today for my wife with it, which was cool. Uh, and and I, shot, I sharpened it even more. It was nice and sharp, but I sharpened it even more. Uh, my favorite sharpening coffee cup at work. And it's a razor blade now. It's a scalpel now, I should say. So I really like this. And I had it dropped in my pocket all day long, just right next to my regular uh, carry. And uh, I love it. You can reach in. You can, if you reach in like this, you know, I, I keep the hook aimed towards my other leg. And uh, if you reach in like this and you pull it out, you have the knife and pakal for defense. Or if you reach in like this, and pull it out like this, you have it for, you know, scoring my carta or whatever you're going to, I don't know why you would score my carta, but uh, very nice knife. I really, really like it. Glad I spent those 30 bucks. A nice little impulse buy. Okay, next up, I knew I was going to uh, get a Pinkerton and I knew I was going to get one of these. Uh, an auxiliary manufacturing. Now he's been on the show. Uh, that's Michael Jarvis of auxiliary manufacturing. He's been on the show and he came on Thursday night knives. And um, I, I like, I like all of his knives, uh, including his kitchen knives. But I, I like all of his knives, but I kept coming back to this. This is the pocket rocket dagger. And this is also an extremely comfortable appendix carry uh, knife, uh, barely prints. Um, though I found, uh, I found that I think I'm going to put some of that rubber on here so I can find exactly the right angle and keep it there. Uh, I found that I would, the angle of it was changing a little bit, but, uh, in, in the right position, it didn't print at all. And you have this very capable three inch dagger. Uh, what is this? I'm not sure what steel this is. I'm going to have to, I know there's a birth card. Oh, it's ADCRV2, I believe. Uh, auxiliary aux mfg auxiliary manufacturing beautiful paper micarta handle and and sculpted Ooh, it's like a needle uh, uh sculpted in this beautiful way it's very ergonomic and comfortable feels great in hand and also feels very secure and that's important for a dagger without quillions or any sort of guard uh these i feel it's pointy and sharp enough that uh butted into my hand like that into my palm and using those um those uh, cutouts there for the fingers you could do thrusting like that but of course this this would accelerate in a reverse grip uh but also you know it's great to have two edges on you in case one goes dull through work you always have the other one you can turn it over so not daggers aren't all just for uh you know dirty work you know, you can you can just if you're careful, you can use it for work work and have twice the longevity. So this is the Pocket Rocket by Michael Jarvis and Auxiliary Manufacturing. Some beautiful stuff. He does a lot of nice stuff with uh, um, what's that Mexican blanket kind of uh, uh, micarta. It's beautiful. All right. So another thing you might remember me saying um, my real goal and this was my stated goal and I kept telling people this to see if someone would say, oh, I saw some over there and you should go check them out. Uh, but as I saw at Blade Show this year, the Pakal star, uh, the Pakal star seems to be waning a little bit, even though everyone kind of feels like they have to add that to their repertoire. Uh, people have kind of calmed down a little bit about all Pakal. Um, and, uh, and certainly people have cooled down a bit on push daggers. I really wanted to, um, I really wanted a push dagger and so happy to remember that these guys, this guy uh, just came out with one. I was very excited uh, to check it out. And then once I saw it and felt it, I loved it. So this is the Stroop Knives push dagger. And uh, it's got a, he had some customs uh, and then he had his regular production. And I went for his regular production because the customs had fancier handles, a beautiful handles but they were thicker and i know that i want to carry this 
So I went for the regular production in the flat, dark earth. Um, great sheath, but look at this blade. This, I believe, is also ADCRV2. Beautifully sculpted, uh, double-edged push dagger here for the between the um, middle finger and the forefinger. This is my preferred position. Uh, the, the other one I have is from Cold Steel, and it's got an equal-sized handle, and it comes through the middle, and that's fine. Uh, but this I prefer. This feels better to me. It feels more controllable. Uh, yeah, and it's chisel ground. Um, so the edges are quite sharp. Um, on a slash, you will do, you know, tremendous damage and all that. But uh, also with that flat back and the high, um, high grind and then that center sh uh, flat, this thing is going to leave a very large hole. So if you're going to use this as a defense knife, which let's face it, that's what this is, you want to do maximum damage in the quickest amount of time. Of course, this is intuitive because you're punching with it. It's very, very difficult to disarm something like this in a motivated person's hands. And uh, then the holes that you do manage to leave will be very large and difficult to, uh, you know, sew up, I guess, or 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 heal. So it, it is a very uh, effective style weapon um for me i just like it because uh, i like push daggers and wanted to add one to my collection so stroop knives always doing cool stuff and chris stroop is a, a great guy and a a vet a military a veteran of the army very nice work speaking of a very nice work as i pause to take a sip of joe I stopped by the booth or the table of American Blade Works, Michael Martin, and you may have seen my quick interview with him and his awesome family. I really like his wife and his kids always seem nice. Uh, this time they were, man, they were tuckered out by the time I got to their table. And it's funny because uh, my daughters are at the age where they want to come now uh, to, um, to Blade Show. So I was uh, keeping my eye, eye out and watching all the kids at Blade Show. And some of them were soldiers. They were excited to be there and they just wanted to keep going, even though they were exhausted. And then some kids were just sort of hanging from their from their uh, parents' arms. And and I always saw parents being very encouraging. You know, you get more um, you get more flies with honey. And so they'd say, come on, come on, let's go. You, you're doing great. You're doing great. Uh, so it was really fun. Uh, but uh that won't be happening. Uh, anyway, uh, so at the table of American Blade Works, uh, I got to check out this Model 2. And they said, take it home and check it out. Make some videos, you know. And uh, they know what they were doing. They were just trying to get this sweetness in my hand for more than the five minutes I was standing in front of them. And uh, whew, it's a very effective sales technique that people have taken advantage of <laughs> with me on this channel because uh i i actually uh, i'm definitely gonna get this uh i'm gonna buy this i won't be sending this back to them i will send 200 dollars back to them uh, or whatever this costs or whatever they charge me um it is really amazing now you know i've talked about american blade works and i've shown off the model one version five um that's a great knife and he's been working to perf uh, one that he worked uh, through six iterations to perfect. And uh, he did, uh, a, you know, used a similar process, not of, uh, uh, but used all of what he learned about the refinement of the knife of his first model, put it into this. And it's amazing. Titanium liner lock. This has magna cut. And I believe, uh, I don't remember what he, um, what it's, uh, hardened to but i do know that shane gables uh approves and if shane gables approves i know it's at the right heat treat because that's a very important aspect to him so like 63 something like that um if i'm not mistaken uh amazing action and this blade uh i i thought because that point is not as acute as the warncliffe he does a Warncliffe for the Model 1 now, and this is a sheep's foot. So the Warncliffe doesn't have that uh, that, art, that hard break there, there, that corner. It's just a gentle slope with more of a point, more of a thrusty point. This thing, I, I, I just thought because it, it wasn't as pointy at the front, 
that it wouldn't be as, oh my gosh, this thing cuts amazingly. Uh, I, I put this through, what did I cut? Oh, just cardboard off of the, the, uh, the new cat food box that came and a couple of other things. Uh, and I got a big uh, thing of coffee at work and I had to cut some box, do some box cutting. And I was so shocked at how nicely uh, I, this thing cuts amazing. So I'm really, really excited about this knife. I also think it's very beautiful. It's beautiful closed too. It looks like, it reminds me of something Art Deco or like the, the Chrysler building or something. Looks like it's almost out of a different era. Um, one that I long to belong to. Um, very, very beautiful knife. Uh, Michael Martin and, uh, and family, you are very smart for telling me to take this and borrow it for a few weeks. Very smart. <clears throat> Consider it a sale. All right, so next up, uh, this is a stand-in. This is my opinion by Tempest Knives. Uh, the reason this is sh I'm showing this and not the microburst is because my wife insisted on taking the microburst until Father's Day because that was the knife that I bought when she said, since you're at Blade Show, uh, just get yourself a Father's Day gift. <laughs> and so I got that. And But I still had to turn it in because I got to wrap it and pretend like they got it for me and all that. Um, so in, in its stead is this, and I got to say, he also has this new, uh, KC also has a new one in prototype form that is awesome. It, it's a titanium liner lock with, a, I believe it'll be 154 CM with an incredible flipper and an incredible uh, opening hole. The flipper is one of those like zero profile flippers uh, with that works amazingly. And um, as does the opening hole. I'm very excited about that that next design. Uh, this one is a great one. I've always really, really liked the pinion. And I had the microburst on loan from KC, and then I slept on it. Uh, you know, I had other things to buy uh, at the time. And, and then seeing it at Blade Show at KC's table and picking it up again, I fell in love with it all over again. My only, I, I really vacillated back and forth where I get all black. Or do I get it with this shiny blade? I decided to go with the, with it's not that shiny. It's, uh, but I decided to go with the non-coated blade so I could more easily see the swedge and the flats and the differentiations between betwixt. Okay, next up, another good friend, uh, Lefty and Colin Maison Pierre of uh, CM Designs, and and here we go, Devo Knives. They're uh, a growler. This thing is, I love this. And they loaned this to me. I got this on loan last year and really liked it. That's a little bit of pork fat right there from the awesome lunch I had with my wife when I played hooky after Blade Show. Uh, but anyway, uh, this knife I had and was very impressed with uh, the prototype. So I bought it off their table for a song. By the way, uh, you should get one of these things. They're quite inexpensive, but they have all these prototypes for dressed up versions of these that are awesome. Uh, so definitely keep your eyes peeled for those. Also, great cutter, that very, very broad blade. And, you know, it's 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 lefty and Colin. So it's like an incredibly thin, slicey blade. A very, very awesome knife. I like this one quite a bit. And uh, as I mentioned uh, first, when I first had it, um, also looks like a big Bowie to me. I know everything, you know, looks like a Bowie to me, but uh, just slight, slight hump on that swedge. If you reversed it a little bit, it'd be like a, a clip point. Great, great knife. The Devo Knives Growler. And then this was so cool. Uh, they gave this to me, which I, I was, I was really, that meant a lot to me. You know, they're not there to give stuff away. Uh, they're there to sell knives and press the flesh and and uh, so they gave this to me and i was uh i wasn't gonna say no i think i said something like no i couldn't possibly and then they insisted and, and i folded immediately uh, this one has a nice uh, hollow ground blade also really thin behind the edge and obviously just so cool look at this beautiful thing this is the pony stout um, and a great sticker came in this one that said my little pony stout, you know, in the, my little pony letters, uh, my daughters were into that great feel like this. I had the, uh, regular stout on loan and that was a great one. Uh, 
larger than this, but I got to say, I think I like this smaller one uh, better. Uh, all that said, I, I do not have them side by side to compare, but this feels just so great in hand. And I can't help but just love how it looks. And the Contour G10 feels great on this. Um, what is the steel? Hang on. Let me see if I can see. Let me see if I can. Sorry. I think it's 14C 28N. I, I, I cannot remember. Uh, but you have a little a backspacer, which I like a lot. And then uh, the, um, the blacked out wire clip. But I like all the blacked out hardware. And I like the proprietary pivot. That's how you do a logo. Keep it off the blade. <laughs> I uh, I did not take my own advice with the Nova one, but hey. Uh, all right. Next up, this was also a gift, a very generous, and I'm really uh, not only proud to have it, uh, but very excited to have it because I think it's really cool. To me, it is a pocket gununting, and this is the um, Orion Knives Cetus. I was talking about Orion I was just I was carrying this today, uh, the Orion Knives Scorpio. Uh, this this was one that he sent me a prototype for. He being David Cam of o Orion Knives, sent me this prototype. I featured it on the channel and and I did like it quite a bit. I mentioned uh, I mentioned how I really like that it's a completely straight blade, but over the whole overall knife arcs and it arcs down from the pivot. So you get a really, uh, you, you get in essence a recurve. You get uh, that ex sort of extreme downward. Uh, here, I'm going to go do this over here in the camera here. Uh, you get that extreme downward um, angle on that on that blade. It's just really efficient cutter uh, and tip cutter and just slicer. You're just drawing material into that triangle. Uh, so really nice. This one is 14C28N. It's a steel frame lock with beautiful wood covers or scales, I guess you might call them. Uh, nice jimping on top. Uh, very, very nice knife. I'm really excited to have this in the collection. And now I have two Orion knives. Uh, thank you, David Cam. Much appreciated uh, for this, this gift. And uh, I, will, I, will be, uh, I will be doing another video of this because it's different. It is, you can feel it's been refined since prototype time, which is always the goal. Okay, the very last thing. That was going to be the last thing. But then at the pit on Saturday night, I recognized someone that I follow on YouTube who's, uh, he's a pretty uh, pretty cool and unique uh, dude. Uh, his knife is, uh, his company is called Erroneous. I guess his name is Aaron, Erroneous Blades. And he does some he does some cool little videos on Instagram where he's in his shop and he's listening to music and he's jamming out and he's showing his knives and he's kind of flipping them around. And, and, uh, I just always stop and watch his, his, his videos. And I saw him, uh, walk into the pit. So I had to run up and introduce myself and I'm going to talk to him on the show. Um, uh, when I get to him, I have a long list of people, uh, but he is definitely on it. And he gave me this, which I thought was so cool. Just out of the blue. Uh, and, uh, it's a razor blade holder, you know, you just put a regular razor blade in there and you, you know what this is. Uh, but he did a little Sukamaki wrap on it and I love it. And it's like skateboard tape underneath and then this hardened lace over top. And a lot of his knives have that feature. A lot of them are wrapped like that and they all have really bright colored laces and bright colored, uh, um, you know, a like glow in the dark and, and all sorts of colorful. He's a knife maker that lives out loud. What can I say? Ah, oh, that was a terrible thing to say. Sorry. I'll never say that again in your presence. All right. Well, thank you for joining me for this uh, show about the blade show acquisitions. Uh, it, it did almost come out to a, a it's, it came out to about a round 10, uh, but some of them I didn't pay for. Um, uh, and, and then others, Everyone gave me a deal. It was so nice. I really appreciate it. So uh, that is Blade Show. It is an awesome thing. And if you can hold out till Sunday, um, I think you can get some good deals on Sunday too. Um, so do check it out if you 
if you can, I highly suggest it. And and before I wrap up, I just want to say thank you to everyone who introduced themselves to me. I I I really enjoy meeting people uh, and talking about knives, but but people who watch the show and come up to me and say, "Hey, uh, I recognize you because I've seen your videos and and I like them." or whatever. Uh, it's really nice. So thank you so much for everyone who introduced themselves. And uh, I just had a great time. And uh, like I said last year, when I'm there, I really feel like I'm in my element. And I feel like everyone else kind of feels like that. So it's a very harmonious sort of atmosphere. Be sure to join us on Sunday for a great interview uh, with a, someone whose knives are, are out of this world stellar. Uh, uh, and, and to see him experience them in person was, was something. Uh, and then of, of course, tomorrow night, Thursday night knives, where you can stand to win, uh, the Miguron Acre just for being present and leaving a comment. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.